This time on Flipping Bangers. It's a car that we just can't turn down. How much is it? £650. Surely there's got to be something wrong with it. But we don't know what to do with it. Oh. That's a bit disappointing, isn't it? That's very uninspiring. But luckily, this cool coupe... There's something strange about the steering. Gets right under our skin. Ah! Oh. So it's leaking everywhere, it isn't it? It looks like there isn't anything it's not leaking this. from. That is a nasty thing. Ugh. I'm Gus Gregory. And I'm Will Trickett. Together, we're risking everything to follow a dream. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. We've packed in our day jobs. And invested our own hard-earned cash. As we try to make a living ah! in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. It's all in the chase. You've got to buy well, you've got to sell well. Why would anybody buy this car? We've got a goal. We want to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see £1,000 back. We're targeting the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that nobody else wants. Can we keep our business afloat, flipping bangers? It needs so much work to do. <laughs> One year ago, we turned our backs on our regular jobs, rented this garage and attempted to carve out a new living by buying and selling cheap cars and made enough money flipping bangers just to return. People dream of giving everything up, but we're doing it for real. And it's scary. We've emptied our pockets again, and this time we have enough to spend 500 to 1,000 pounds on each car. If we want to cover our costs and pay ourselves wages, it's essential we double our return on every pound we put in. And we can only afford five workshop days per car. We've swapped a salary and a wage, possibly for nothing. The workshop calls for new metal, and we've got to decide how to fill it. You know, when I woke up this morning, enjoying a lovely cup of tea, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice to sort of go British, get a British car? Great mark. Mm, like Jaguar, or Rolls, or Alvis, or Riley, or yeah. Morris yeah. Marina. Uh, maybe not a Morris Marina. <laughs> or Jag XJ. Yeah, nice. uh, we've got to be a little bit careful because for the money we've got, we're going to um, we're going to have to work hard. A um, rusty one. Uh, a bit sick of rust, to be totally honest. Uh, Rover P5. No, I know. I know, Rover Sterling. You know the one that was half Honda? You just don't see them. I couldn't tell you the last time I saw one of those. We should look for one of those, because that is going to be like looking for an extinct car. Mm. Mm. I'd rather not find one than find one, so extinct sounds good. <laughs> so this time it's all about getting something rare, and the Rover 800 is, with only two on sale that we can see right now on mainstream sites, both awful. But we also look on boot sale listings and come across a red Rover Sterling. We cannot miss this chance. How much is it? It's £650. How old is it? Uh, it's RH 98. Surely there's got to be something wrong with it. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. On the advert it says, and I am just going by the advert, it yes. says there is nothing wrong with it. Get in, drive it away. So I, I'm just going by what it says. So I think failing it okay. being a typing error, a yeah. scam or a misprint, actually it could be a fabulously undersold car. And we love an undersold car, don't we? The Rover seller is working away, so the car has been left at a pal's house until it's sold. Here, number two. That looks tidy, doesn't it? It does, yeah. If it's not a scam, the Rover Sterling looks amazing for the price. I'll give him a knock. Could be worse. Jack. Hi, guys. Hello, I'm Gus. Nice Pleased to meet you. you. How you doing? Hi, Jack. Yeah, I'm you're well. all right. So yeah, this good. is it? Yeah, this is it. Well, I have got loads of questions for you. To be honest, I'm not going to be able to answer them. It's, uh, it's a friend of mine's car. He's gone away. It's been here for about three weeks, and uh, the missus is going crazy already. So what's the catch? At 650 quid, there must be one. Nothing to do with mm, service history, nothing, anything wrong with nothing. it? There's a little bit of paperwork, that's it. Right, Can about changed? Okay. No idea. Brakes. It, it drives, it might stop. Um, I've got no idea. <laughs> 
But maybe the best uh, thing is if we have a poke around it. I it? think that is. At least, do you know what? I'll give you the keys. Uh, take it for a little drive. See what you think, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No worries. All right, there then. we are. Okay. All right, guys, enjoy it. Thank Cheers, you. Jack. See you in a minute. Well, there you go. The Great British Mark. It's exactly what you wanted. It's kind of cool, nice proportioned-looking car. Big two-seater coupe. You know. Prepare yourself. Oh dear. Oh, 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 oh. Acres Actually, of leather. You know what? That is a lot of leather. And it's a nice colour. I like the burgundy with the, the, the cream as well. Nice hard leather. And it's in good nick as well, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's surprisingly good. We want to like the Rover, but fail to get excited about it. Oh, you can tell it's a luxury car, though. Well, because somebody the... opens it for you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How very kind of you. Oh. That's a bit disappointing, isn't it? That's very uninspiring. Because yeah. you're expecting to see a V6 in there, aren't oh, you? I was hoping for more than just a two litre, yeah. And you know what, Gus? That's absolutely perfect underneath. At least with Will in the passenger seat, there's a better chance the car will get back in one piece. So this is a two litre manual, so it's a sort of pauper spec, although, albeit a very luxurious pauper spec of a luxury car. Yeah, it's funny though, isn't it? Because uh, it does seem like a sea of plastic to me, but it does have that sort of relative cachet of a, of a luxury car. Yeah. There have to be issues with this car, and I think I've found some. There's something strange about the steering. It's not... It doesn't feel right. I can't really put my finger on it. And the clutch has got very little left in it, one way or another. I don't know whether it's master cylinder or whether it's... or what it is, but it certainly needs looking at. I like it in here. It's nice to drive. The, the one thing that worries me is all these electrics, but in actual fact, just pushing these now, they do all work. They do all work. I've got a bit of an issue with these door ones, though, because I can't get my window up. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm yours, yours working. has gone up. OK. Well, this one won't go up. So oh, OK. There's, that... there's clearly a problem with So now with we've that. got three jobs in need going. But our business is about making money out of fixing troubled cars. And this one has a lot of potential. What I've been thinking is that if he wants to get rid of it for £650, then he might really want to get rid of it, mightn't he? That's the point at which we <laughs> beat the price down with a big bad stick. A proper sort of dealer style, £300. It seems cruel to do this, but we're going to try and bag this once 30 grand car for £300. 1% of its original price. Hi right, guys. Jack, all right. <laughs> how are you doing? Not bad. Right. So how do we find it? It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, it's certainly interesting, yeah. 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 It has got a few issues, I'd have to say. All right, well, it's, it's, it's to be expected, though, to be Yeah, honest. exactly, it's yeah. old. But we were thinking, if he... I know you want it off the drive, yeah, and we definitely. don't know how much yeah. your mate wants to get rid of it. But if he'll take 300 quid for it, <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it away. 300, it's for 650. That's I a know, bit lower, but you're yeah. right, I do want it gone. I do want it gone. So um, let me make the phone call. Let me give him a shout, and let's see what he says, yeah? OK. Jack disappears for three agonising minutes while we bathe in embarrassment. It'll be one of the lowest offers we've ever made. And actually, it's quite a nice car. Right, so I spoke with him. Ah. And this is what he's saying, £400, and it's yours today. So, and that is sold as seen, though, so it never comes back to this address, whatever happens on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. What do you think? Oh, well, you know, I, I want to, you know... We'll it's great. Thanks so, very much. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy Cheers, it. Jack. Cheers, Jack. <laughs> Cheers, guys. All the best. Cheers, mate. Thanks, bye, bye. <laughs> That's a mad deal. £400. Jack is the kind of seller we like. Direct, practical and utterly disinterested in making money. Can you believe it? £400 pounds for all that opulent luxury. Yeah, that's Ooh. all right, isn't it? That's, I think... I think we've done really well. We've got a lot of car for our money. But who wants to sell a car that badly? I mean, you could take that car to the scrapyard and get 150 quid for it. Yeah, we're not just about to do that, though. What we're going to do is we're going to sort out the niggles as quickly as we can, and we're going to turn our 400 quid into a really nice, clean profit. I've got a good feeling about this car. I know the steering had issues and yes. maybe the air conditioning didn't work, but, you know, they're small things compared to what we've had, aren't they? If we're lucky, we might be able to have an afternoon off, or, or even two, maybe. Excellent. Maybe we can have a nice cup of tea on our afternoon off 
in the opulent luxury of our Rover Sterling. Rover put a lot of time and energy into producing a very luxurious car and it still looks like something we could potentially sell on and make some money out. So, you know, I think this is a win-win situation. And as ever, there's not been any due diligence done and neither of us know what the market's like for Rover Sterlings, particularly, especially not two-door ones, because there isn't any. What I do know is I definitely wouldn't buy it. No. No. No, I don't think I would either. I don't think that's a very good starting point, but there you go. At least it's the truth. So we're not wild about the Rover, but at £400, we'd be mad to walk away. So we're sticking with it. Back at the workshop, we come to terms with having bought a leather-laden luxury car, almost by accident. Yes, it was cheap, but it's so rare, the market for this car is pretty much non-existent. How can we make money on it in just five days? So the first step is to apply our time-tested process. That means we take some picks for an auction ad. We're not going to change the car, so these ones will be a good representation of the finished article. I'm just setting up an online auction for our Rover Sterling. And it's a strange anomaly, this car, because there weren't very many of them when they were new, which is secret code for them not being very popular, actually. And there's certainly not very many of them now, but I don't know if they're any more popular now, whether they've got any sort of cult uh, following. But bizarrely, I've just seen online here a very well-known uh, site for um, talking about second-hand cars. And it says on there that our Rover Sterling, our two-door Rover Sterling Coupe, is a future classic, which I find slightly hard to believe, but doesn't mean I'm not going to believe it. So judging the market is difficult. That's what I'm saying. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off 99p, because that's what we do. And then I'm going to be a bit cheeky by saying that the reserve price is £2,500, which would be great. But then this is the big one. The buy it now price, people are going to have to dig deep for this. £3,995 will purchase you our beautiful Rover Sterling. There, done. <laughs> So in comes the Sterling, a car that could well be one of the fastest through the workshop. All we know is that it's got dodgy electric window and the clutch and steering hydraulics might need a top up. Not much, but what else will we find in this 400 pound beauty? Let's dig into it and see. Well, we know when we drove it that the steering was atrocious. Ah. I think I can see why the steering was atrocious. <clears throat> That's not what I wanted to see. I mean, no. that is throwing fluid out everywhere, That's isn't it? a lot of oil, isn't it? Oh, no. You know what? That's not just a pipe leaking. That's a whole rack we need to put on this car. Yeah, that's a big job. Oh, it? that is an absolute nightmare. That's not the sort of job that we wanted. No. Although, that's... we knew that it was the steering was awful, so it's going to be something, isn't it? That's a problem. The other thing was clutch, wasn't it? Clutch was... Oh, I don't want to look at that now. That's been, that been so bad. <sighs> uh, well, what was the clutch doing? Well, it was on the floor. OK, well, it's a hydraulic one by the looks of it. Here's the slave cylinder. And if it was on the floor, then there's a fair chance that it could just need fluid in it or bleeding out, yeah, or both. Yeah, or bleeding, yeah, exactly. And it doesn't actually look too bad. <laughs> Every cloud has got a silver lining. Oh. Ah. Uh. Oh, until you pull back the gator and realise that it's dripping fluid. So that's everywhere. leaking as that's, well. Yeah, we, well, that'll be the problem, won't it? It will. Look, here it comes. Yeah, fluid. Oh, oh yeah, well done, finger. <laughs> OK, so our cheap motor isn't exactly issue free, but no car can be so inexpensive and not need a little work. We've just got to get it done. Have you seen your... Um, your gator on the end of the drive shaft? Uh, oh, yeah, I can. Is yours split? No, it's perished. Yeah. You can see in the cracks, it's all gone. Yeah, this has as well. Oh, God. So An another nightmare. Yeah, well, another thing I to find. It's I'm really not enjoying this car already, already. 
Can I have an Eccles cake from your trolley? No, but I wouldn't mind a nice cup of tea at this stage. That's a nice idea. The jobs are coming out now. The Rover is cosmetically great, but the clutch, steering and CV boots are all defective. The garage bills for those alone would be easily £1,000 or more. Maybe, because of this, at some point in the past, someone has sold this car very cheap, and now it's washed up on our shore. Right now, we're trying to get access to all the dodgy items so we can pull them off. The most important one is the steering rack, which is a pretty messy job and takes a couple of hours. Now for a slight shock. I momentarily get too up close and personal to Will, but at least it's all in a good cause. You see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got my hand in it, just. <laughs> there is no way this steering rack can be repaired. Look at that. Excellent. Oh, I hate it. So it's leaking everywhere, it isn't it? It looks like there isn't anything it's not leaking this. from. I think that's a... Is it supposed to be like that? Yeah, but look, it's all coming out from there. Yeah. And inside here... Oh, oh, do you think we'll be able to find one? Well, I, I'm, I'm doubting it, but we've got to find one, so there you go. But yeah. it's getting dark now. I've had enough. Yep. This is out. Yep. We haven't got a new one to put in. Let's no. skedaddle. Yeah, let's go home. Perfect. So at the end of the first day, we slip off home, knowing there's no such thing as a cheap and problem-free car, at least not in our world. It's the second day on Project Rover. We wanted a rare car, we wanted a British car, and someone upstairs must like us because we landed this Lux ride for only £400. But we found a few demons lurking beneath those spelt lines. We've pulled out the steering rack and now we've got to get to those drive shaft gators. It's annoying because we have to strip down the suspension to get to them. Because we're waiting for our steering rack to turn up, I'm going to make the most of a little bit of downtime and change these CV gaiters. They're a bit perished and they won't pass an MOT at all. The gaiters protect the CV joints from dirt and grime that attack the bearings inside. Our shafts seem OK, so I just need to get new gaiters, which are a few quid online. This is quite a straightforward job. And you can, you can do it at home. The mistake that I've made with this one is I should have warmed the gator up in the kettle first to make it a bit softer and easier to get onto the shaft. So that was my bad. But once this is on, put the grease inside, do up the clips, reassemble the whole lot. I also need to apply axle grease to protect the joint in the future. A gentle tap gets it into place, and I use a clip to seal the rubber tight. And that one is done. I'm also in a holding pattern until the spares arrive, so I'm looking at the Dicky Lecky window switch. Yes, it's only a tiny detail, but not being able to put the window up or down won't impress a future owner. What I'm going to do is put this down here and see if I've got power to the switch. The switch is pretty high tech. I probably can't fix it. But if the power to the switch is the issue, then I stand a better chance of sorting that instead. I just use a basic tester for this. So there is power getting to the switch, which means that it's a problem with the switch. There's a broken circuit in there somewhere. And I think I'm going to put it all back together and phone someone to look at it, because I really do think I could do more damage than good in there. Until we get the missing parts, there's really nothing more we can do but go home. 
It's deeply frustrating when our workshop time is so limited, but sometimes that's the way it is. Mine's a shandy. Day three, and the gifts have arrived, ending our torment. Our steering rack isn't new, it's a refurb, and at 90 quid, it's a lifesaver for our rover. This is exciting, isn't it? It's a, it is a little bit like Christmas in a mechanical sort of way. Ooh, it is a lot more like Christmas now I can actually see it. That's Ooh. good, isn't it? There should be a couple of O-rings. I'm quite <laughs> chuffed. I'm quite chuffed about this because I never thought we were actually... Oh, that's empty. That's the I empty never box. Yeah. I never thought we were actually going to manage to get one of these. Should we yeah, check nice that it's the same? Though. Thank you. Yeah, I'll go and get the other one. Yeah, it looks like. I don't know. Well, it's the same, isn't it? Yeah, the rest of it all looks brilliant. It that definitely is a is Rover nice. 800 steering rack. It is, yeah, and has been in the past. Oh, it's yeah, that's what that is. Exchange. Oh, top. brilliant. Right, well, I'm quite keen to get a cracking on this, so as soon as I finish my nice cup of tea... Is it a nice cup of tea? It's a nice cup of coffee, actually. Oh. Even better. After fussing over it for ages, we're happy it's complete and get on with the fitting. The first thing is to work out where the centre of our track is, otherwise the steering on our rover might get a bit interesting. And about an eighth. When I say about an eighth, I mean almost exactly an eighth. So I'm going to come back half of an eighth, start point. One and a half. I mark the centre point to line up with the steering wheel's centre, and then it's time to fit. Gus did such a good job in the footwell last time, he's in charge of connecting up the rack. Right, we ready then, Gus? Yeah. Oh, come on. And with utter surgical precision, we make the connection. Right, how's that? Well, yeah, that seems to be pretty much in. We reconnect the steering arms, and at last we've completed a job. When I was driving the Rover on the test drive, I could feel that the clutch wasn't quite right. Now, if it had been biting at the top of the pedal, that would denote that the clutch was worn out on its way out anyway. So we wouldn't have bought the car, because we can't swallow that sort of expense at this stage. But it wasn't. It was biting right at the bottom of the pedal. And that normally means that there's contaminant in the fluid, normally water, uh, or there's a leak somewhere in the system. And on visual inspection of the slave cylinder, which is still on the car, you could see that it was leaking from here. So I'm going to put this one on. The clutch slave is a service part and is designed to be swapped mostly without specialist tools or knowledge. That's why it's broken. <laughs> but there is a difficult bit. You have to be so delicate with this junction here. So this is where the fluid pipe goes into the slave cylinder from the master cylinder. And often they get corroded and stuck and you end up undoing the nut and twisting it off the pipe. So then you have to replace the whole pipe, which is a world of pain. Once the old slave is off, the new one bolts into place. It's a reassuringly easy job, after all the fiddling around with a steering pump. Right, that's on. Just need to top up the system and bleed it. The exhaust can go back on now with some fresh gasket paste for a leak seal joint. The wheels are back on. And then the Rover goes back together, looking remarkably similar to the car that rolled into the workshop three days ago. I say look similar, but a few of the vital organs have received emergency care and are now fighting fit. We're working on a cheap but intriguing Rover Sterling. I'm slowly falling in love with its luxury. Will is one step behind. We've fitted the new steering rack 
and we need to add some hydraulic fluid and then bleed the system. Gus? Yep. Do you want to fire it up and uh, spin it from lock to lock so we can get the bubbles out? I wind the wheel from left to right to expel any trapped air, which is compressible, unlike the liquid. It'll come to the top of the filler tank. When I first drove this car, the primary interfaces between me and the car, so the steering wheel and the clutch, were really graunchy. And it made me think that this car was a bit rubbish in actual fact. But now this is very smooth and the clutch is very smooth and they were relatively quick and cheap fixes. You start to realise just how much luxury there is in this car and whether you like it or not, whether it's your taste is another matter. But actually, it's a lot of luxury for the money. Done? Yeah, all done. Power steering and clutch. Excellent. Have we actually made any money on this car, though, do you think, yeah? The answer was supposed to be yes. I'm going to get Will a cup to cure his doubts that we've added nothing, but he may be right. I'm just having a catch-up with our Rover 800 Sterling auction, and it's not pretty reading. Although there's people looking at the car, there's very few people bidding on the car, but the people who are bidding on the car are bidding very low because, at the moment, there's a perception that this R Reg Rover is cheap transport. Whereas what we need is people who appreciate the car for what it is and what we appreciate it for now, which is an important integral part of Rover's history. So we need people who see this as a classic car, not people who see this as cheap transport. It would be nice to get someone to come and see it as well. There's been no interest in that at all. With Will grumbling around somewhere, I need to look at the dodgy window switch and call in my electrician, mate. Sean, hello. How are you doing? All, all right. right. How are you? Not too bad. I was just checking these fuses. They all, they all seem to be fine, and there's power going to the switch. It's just right. not, not putting the windows up and down. And have you checked power to the, to the window switch itself? Yes. You have done? Yes. Right. Well, they are a very common problem on these. Are they? With corrosion and whatnot. Oh, so right. That would be the first place I'd be looking at. Well, these switches here yeah. are the ones that um, have the problem with the water ingress, and they suffer quite badly with corrosion and dry solder joints oh, okay. with inside the switch. So you've done them before? So I've done a few of these before, have quite you? a few of these. Not so many on the two-door, but more so on the four-door, as they, these aren't so very popular. What a relief. Sean knows exactly what to do with the switch. There's the back of the printed circuit. These, dry, these solder joints here are all corroded, look, cause, cause through dampness and over the years of a bit of wear and tear. OK. You get a dry solder joint and then you get a bad connection from the switches. Come on, then, are you going to do it here or are you going to do no, it? No, we're going to do it in the van. All right, well, come okay. on, we're going to come with you. Lovely. So what have you got? A bench in here, then? Yeah, we have. Just in here. There we go. The first job is to remove the small bits of mould that are making the connections fail. How do you get Will's toothbrush in <laughs> <laughs> Then Sean works around the board, re-soldering each connection, £45 in all. There we go. Is that it? That's it. Excellent. Shall we see if it works? Let's go and see. <laughs> So no pressure, but this is the moment of truth. Oh, it, it is, isn't it? Here we go. Right, what we'll do is we'll put the back on it. Yeah. Just so that we know which way the switch is going to sit. Oh, see, so yeah, yeah. Push it in the hole. Switch ignition on. There we go. And there we go. <laughs> that doesn't work the other way. Fantastic. There we go. All done. Perfect. All done. Oh, that's great. There we go. Thanks very much for that. Thank that's you very much. No brilliant. problem at all. I'll see you again. Absolutely okay. no doubt. Cheers, Nathan. Thank see you. Ya. So that's the end of day three. We've sorted the worst of the rover's issues, we think, and that puts us in an unusually good spot. We flip bangers to put food on the table, and this Rover Sterling Coupe was banger priced, just £400, but offers every electrical goodie that was on offer on the market 20 years ago. 
We've got it in good shape, but our target should be excellent. We're trying to get nearly £4,000 for it. When I first opened the bonnet of this Rover, I was underwhelmed by the fact that there was a four-cylinder engine in there because I was expecting to see a six-cylinder engine. It, it does make it even rarer, which is a good thing, but it, it's also leaking oil from down here. So I'm going to put a new gasket under here to stop it leaking oil. So when the next person opens the bonnet for the first time, they go, oh, it's slightly underwhelming, it's four-cylinder, but hey, this is not leaking oil. To remove the cam cover, all I need is a screwdriver. We're still in the age where engines can be fiddled with by the man at home without risk of lethal electric shock. An oil leak is bad for new buyers and can also point to an engine that hasn't been maintained. You can feel how compressed the gasket is at the back here. It's actually flush with the casing, whereas here it's proud. So I I'm guessing this is where it was leaking. In actual fact, you can see that that's where a lot of the oil was coming from. I expose the top of the head and use a moisture repellent to clean it up. If you go in too heavy-handed here, you can damage the surface of the head. This engine isn't Honda, it's Rover's own, and I do manage to get a replacement gasket set online for only £10. You can't expect to get top money for a car that's unloved. And nothing shows unloved like an engine that's covered in oil and muck where a gasket's been leaking. It's a really, really quick and really cheap fix. And that little cleanup will just help things along when our 4K buyer comes to call. Will's got some ideas to help that too. Our Rover, look at it, it's a sea of leather and luxury everywhere you look. And I need to do a job in here which is going to up its game a little bit. I could wash it and polish it, but I don't like doing that, so I'm going to avoid it for as long as possible. However, this gear stick gator is a horrible eyesore and needs sorting out. I reckon, with a little bit of time and some quite affordable fabric, I can make a new one of these on my sewing machine and make it look absolutely wonderful in it. Large parts of the Rover are handmade, but the poor man's Bentley interior ethos didn't extend to the vinyl gator. I've looked online and there are some leather one-size-fits-all options, but I think that bespoke is the way to go. Those are my three panels. I've just got to reproduce those now in nice, shiny, new fabric. So, I stretch out the old panels to make a template, which I make from stiff cards, so I can stick it onto the new material. Then I cut this into the leatherette, which was knocking about in the workshop, call it two quid's worth, and stitch it all back together. If I've done my job well, this will fit perfectly. This lovely leather interior has been finished off with this fantastic bit of imitation leather. <laughs> Will is happy with his contribution, so I'm not going to say anything apart from let's go home and dream of new ways to make our sterling sterling. Day five. We've got the ultimate banger that looks exactly like a posh car but costs the same as a pair of glasses. We've put it up for auction but the fixed selling price is a whopping 3995. So, that means from the miserable oily stuff, we've got to move on to the jobs that really sells the car, like everything working. Air conditioning systems contain various unpleasant chemicals that Gus and I are advised not to touch. 
So aircon specialist Gary can look for a leak in the system or a fault in the compressor. Oh. Hi, uh, Hi, you must oh, be Will. I am Will. Good day to you. Gary? I'm Gary. Nice one. How are you doing? A lot better than this. So this is our rover that I was telling you about. OK. We've got a problem with the air conditioning and uh, we're hoping that you might be able to have a look at it and work some magic on it. It's not working. First thing we'll do, we'll see if there's any refrigerant in the circuit. How's that happen then? Well, we'll connect this machine up to it, onto these two service ports, mm -hmm. and that will tell us if there's any refrigerant in the circuit. As you can see, Will, there's no system pressure. Ah, oh, that might be why it's so, not working then. We have a leak. The aircon system is pressurised. And it's a complex web of pipes and parts. And finding the leak requires a bit of detective work. Gary refills the system and sprays the weak points and looks for signs of bubbling. So that's it there? Yep, we can fix that. What, repair that pipe? We can repair that section of pipe. If we remove the pipe, we can uh, do a permanent fix on it for you. I'm quite relieved. The compressor, a common issue, isn't the problem here because it's a few hundred quid more than the car. So I'm going to lend a hand getting to this dodgy pipe. With the system drained down, I'm in no danger and soon fish it out. Here we are, look, Gary, I've got that bit off. Excellent. This is the bit where I hand it all over to you, really. Thank you very much. There you are. Right, what we'll do is we're opening up this part of the clamp where we saw it leaking from. There you go, Will, there's your corrosion. Gary is marking the pipe on the flat areas and then uses custom tools to cut down and rebend the new section into place. He's got all the kits, right down to the fixings made for this 8mm aluminium pipe. There you go, Will, one leak free pipe. Excellent, thank you very much. I'm going to go and put that straight on then. Excellent. Gary charges me 40 quid, which is pretty fair. And once it's been repressurised, we can check whether the leaks have all gone. We'll do a little spray on the fittings to make sure it's all OK. Magic. Yeah, no bubbles. None. A successful repair. Yes. Yeah. I'm heading back to the workshop to tell Gus the good news that our 400 quid Rover is one step closer to being that 4,000 pound car that we both want it to be. How was that? You wouldn't believe it, it's absolutely brilliant. The air conditioning is working so well, I've had to have the heated seats on all the way back. <laughs> and if you take this car out, you're gonna need a jumper, a jacket and your fit coat on. <laughs> and perhaps some woolly socks as well. Excellent. <laughs> Finally, a smile from Will, but how long will it last? When you fix up a car and drive it for the first time, a few other little issues often come to the surface. That's why it's called a shakedown. Uh, well, I'm investigating what I thought was going to be a small blowing exhaust, but I investigated with this, and now it's got a humongous hole in it, which had been patched up with bits of filler. So I'm going to have to replace the whole rear silencer now. Whereas parts like the air conditioning cost a fortune, a new exhaust box is only 50 quid or so. Once I've got the old one off, I've got a new one ready to plumb straight in. With a little bit of exhaust sealer. That's another job off the list. And then we give the rover a proper loving clean, even using soap. A really decent wash down of the seats. A little buff and polish in the engine bay. 
And with all that done, the rover reaches the end of its journey. You can't see most of the work on this car. We've replaced the steering rack, clutch slave, and the CV joints, plus the exhaust. We've made the electric windows work and sorted out the aircon. Will has made a new gear lever gator and cleaned the seats. I've even jet washed under the bonnet. The Rover is now a gem. But you know the crazy thing? We've got the car pretty much perfect and the Rover owes us less than 700 pounds. I wasn't really into this car, this Rover Sterling. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight up. And you know the reason why? I was thinking about a more traditional classic, which this isn't at this stage. No, I agree with you completely, but I think it's a very good car. And I think that when it was being made, Honda were tied up with Rover. They were producing a very, very good car. And the more you work on this car, the more you realise, don't you? It's well put together, it's well thought out. And there's a lot of luxury in there as well. It's a proper luxury. It's of its time. I completely agree with what you're saying, you know, a lot. But you said we weren't going to have to do any work on this car. In fact, I remember you said we're not even going to have to lay a spanner on this car. And I sort of, you know, we have had to do a fair amount. That doesn't sound like me. Did I say that? <laughs> yeah, it was, quite, it was quite a bold statement. <laughs> so, what could be a better treat for us than a blast down a country lane in the Rover? We need it, and the Sterling relishes the chance to be set free. I think it's funny, isn't it? The last time we were driving this car, and the steering was grunchy and the clutch was right, and it was sort of masking the true luxury status of it. And we were thinking, oh, should we, shouldn't we? Neither of us were quite sure what it was, were we? But well, I'm glad we bought it. wafts along, doesn't it? It's got that very sort of luxurious suspension feel to it. And I mean, we are sitting in here like a couple of successful middle-aged businessmen, aren't we? Well, we are. <laughs> we are successful <laughs> middle-aged businessmen, aren't we? Look, imagine what it would have been like in the 90s. Put yourself in the oh. 90s and you've just spent 30 grand, which was a lot of money then, yeah. wasn't it? On this car that was 80% handmade. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't imagine that because Back in the 90s, I couldn't even afford a bicycle, let <laughs> alone <laughs> <laughs> a car. <laughs> well, I genuinely think you'd feel good, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would feel good. It's a refined car. It's yeah. got plenty of luxury. It's got plenty of poke. It's got, what yeah. I would say, good suspension. Yeah. And it's got, it's got good safety features. So, and, and, and today, to own this car and to feel this way, you don't need to spend a lot of money, do you? But someone out there does need to spend some money to feel this good. The pressing question is, how much? I've been looking at our auction, see how it's coming on. I've also been looking at the market as well. And to be honest, it's not a pretty picture. No. The market seems to be flat on its face and the auction isn't much better. That sounds all too familiar, actually. Where are we yeah. up to then? We're only up to 1,200 quid. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, and it doesn't seem very good, does it? No, it doesn't seem very good. But keep our fingers crossed, it may be OK. Yeah. We do find someone who says he wants to buy the Rover, but can't visit as he's working on location. So what's the solution? So where is this bloke? I thought we were supposed to be meeting him. He's in here. Oh, uh, no, that sounds quite technologically advanced for me. I think I might go and sit indoors. All right, I'll show him around the car, see what he says. OK. Hi, Andy. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can see you fine. Can you actually see the car from there? I can. That, oh, wow. Wow, that looks nice. OK, well, that's rear three-quarter. It's got a new exhaust pipe on it. It's got lots of new bits and pieces, actually. Tyres are very good. The wheels are completely unscuffed. It looks really good. Clean. Have you had to do much to it? No, we have literally just cleaned it. I mean, it's it, the, the leather on the seats is amazing. It's proper high luxe. I'll take you over to the dash side. There. It's all very, it's all very neat. All this walnut is genuine. So are you actually interested then, Andy? I'd think about 
two two something like that for it. What are you what are you holding out well, for? Well, really, the minimum is two four five two four fifty. About two three fifty. Really, we want two four fifty. That's that's our sort of lowest that we'd go on it. All right, you've twisted my hand. It does look really good. Um, if it if it is as good as it looks, I'll go to two four fifty, Gus. Okay, brilliant. Well, let's shake on that, shall we? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks very much. Yeah, talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> You're shaking hands with the computer, are you? <laughs> so we sold it. Yeah, yeah, 2,450. So not four grand, is it? No, but it's OK. I think that's a well done us. Yeah, I yeah. think right. It's all right. With the transfer made the next day, we more than triple our return on the Rover. It's slightly short of what we wanted, but it's not bad for a car that only costs £400. <laughs>